we are Myth Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have Karen De La Carriere joining me again about Scientology and welcome back. Derek, you look as handsome as ever. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Hello. And you as beautiful as ever, as usual. But I want to ask you something. You know, Tom Cruise and John Travolta, they believe in Scientology. There, I mean, th there's some really big names out there who are convinced of this, this movement. And uh, maybe we should ask the question to have you tackle this question. What do Scientologists actually believe? You know, Scientology is a ladder of different levels going higher, higher, higher. And the lower levels, the intro levels, are quite effective and quite educational and can give people, you're not getting into any sci-fi of volcanoes exploding and attached spurs. You're just simple good stuff of how to communicate better, how to solve problems and look at the problems you are causing, that kind of thing. They are life improvement courses, these lower levels. So they take common, common sense, sense, the things yeah. we all, no matter what you believe, can agree on and see as pragmatic or practical things we all would go, you know, yeah, that's, that makes sense. I think I'll do that. No matter what you believe, they tap into that at first. Absolutely. But what is very deceptive is when people walk on the door in the door and sign up, and do these lower level, they have no idea what's ahead. They don't have a clue that Scientology's six upper levels are exorcism levels. Mm. They don't have a clue. And Scientology doesn't say, see, you take the Roman Catholic Church, the evangelicals, you walk in the church, the Bible is right there. Take it or leave it. There's brutality in the Bible. But they don't hide the Bible as, oh, it's confidential and you can only read it from your Scientology is, we have secrets. But yeah. you will only get there if you follow the structure. That's the and thing. you pay and the money. And pay the money, level by level. By the time you're done with the lower levels, you're fifty thousand dollars into it. Can I say one thing before we go into some of this? I remember listening to Tom Cruise's testimony, mm. and he always talks about how he failed in life and Scientology saved the day. And mm. the very things he was talking about that helped him with Scientology was many of those very practical, basic common every day to day things that we can do better at. Mm -hmm. So Scientology does a really good job out the gate, really capitalizing on the basics that people mm -hmm. in life need structure. And it, it gives you this sense of, I have purpose. I have this, I, I feel like I'm caught. And they give you that out the gate without giving you the whole package here, nibble on this appetizer but they're going to sneak the little bit of uh, stuff in there. And the next thing you know, you're starting to find yourself indoctrinated, believing in things you wouldn't have beforehand, but he was convinced. Good. Yeah. That was, that was good, Derek. It's, it's a bait and switch because you don't know what lies ahead and you don't automatically get onto the, these confidential upper levels. It's, by invitation only. And you have to get ethics clearance and RTC clearance. RTC is a very high management thing. And they look up your ethics. They want to know if you're a risk. They want to know if you're going to go blab about all this on the internet, which hundreds of people now do. But, in, but even with all of this exposed all over the web, geez, they still behave like it's the holy grail, the most confidential of confidential. So what happens is you have to get sex checks and interrogatories to find out if you're OT eligible. 
and people are like drawn in. What are these secrets? I don't know what. Yes. To do. And they pay, and they have all these interrogatories, and they confess their masturbations. And they confess they were attracted to another woman, not their wife. Da, da, da. And they go on and on. And then they go and see the ethics officer, and they do amends, penances for their crimes. It goes, it's a long runway. Then finally the day arrives, and they get a white envelope, and it has gold embossed markings. And the envelope, they open it, and it says, you are invited to the OT levels. And they take a deep breath. It's like they are overjoyed. They have no idea what these OT levels are. But they did the runway and paid mega bucks to be on the ramp just to get, just to arrive. <laughs> There's no automatic, <laughs> look, you've given us $50,000, you're great. Here you are. Go in the room and read this. No, there's this runway. And then, Dennis, are you able, uh, Derek, are you able to just please read when they're finally given the OT3 pack? They are stunned. Yeah, so I want to walk sh- right out. Some people walk right out. I want to show this to people. This is the paper that yeah. you sent me. Pages, uh, pages and pages more, but that's the open page one. Mm-hmm. Right. This is the, this is what you sent me, and I just wanted people to see like who. What is this, by the way? Is this written by somebody? That's Hubbard's writing. That's Hubbard's that's writing. Hubbard. Okay, so this is the man with the plan. But let me go ahead. Well, you know what? I'm gonna keep it up, and I'm gonna read you what it says. At least some of it. The head of the Galactic Federation, 76 planets around larger stars visible from here, founded 95 million years ago, very space opera, solved overpopulation, 250 billion or so per planet, 178 billion on average. By mass implanting, he caused people to be brought to Tegeic Earth and put an H-bomb on the principal volcanoes, Incident 2. And then the Pacific area ones were taken in boxes to Hawaii and the Atlantic area ones to Las Palmas and there packaged. His name was Xenu. He used renegades, various misleading data by means of circuits, etc. was placed in the implants. When through with his crime, loyal officers to the people captured him after six years of battle and put him in an electronic mountain trap where he still is. They are gone or they are gone. The place confederation has since been a desert. The length and brutality of it all was such that this confederation never recovered. The implant is calculated to kill by pneumonia, etc. Anyone who attempts to solve it, this liability has been dispensed with by my tech development. One can free will through the implant and die unless it is approached as precisely outlined. The free will, auto running on and on, lasts too long. Deny sleep, etc., and one dies. So be careful to do only incidents one and two as given and not plow around and fail to complete one Thetan at a time. In December 1967, I knew someone had to take the plunge. I did and emerged very knocked very knocked out, but alive. Probably the only one ever to do so in 75 million years. I have all the data now, but only that given here is needful. One's body is a mass of individual thetans stuck to oneself or to the body. One has to clean them off by running Incident 2 and Incident 1. It is a long job requiring care, patience, and good auditing. You are running beings. They respond like a pre-clear, some large, some small. Thetans believed they were one. This is the primary error. Good luck. Hmm. What the? F- what did I just read? <laughs> that is so crazy. Tell I me. Know people are made are put in fear. They are told, if you are exposed to this, if you get some renegade copy of this and you read it, 
you're going to die of pneumonia. You're going to be dead. <laughs> What's going on? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and hundreds of people have read that. This has all been, my God, it's all over the internet and has been for years. Nobody ever came forward and said, my God, I read all this and I got pneumonia and died. But Hubbard did frighten a lot of people. Be yeah. careful now. Once you read this, you die of pneumonia. If you don't do exactly what Scientology says you're to do, you, you used to believe and this. And you do the procedure. Let's let's keep it let's keep it as honest and real. You used to believe this. You oh. used to read this and be terrified and obey this, didn't I you? Did. I did. Wow. And the way I did it was exactly for the procedure. You look for a spirit around you and the meter reads and then you send him to tell you which volcano he got blown up in and he'll name the volcano and you telepathically then send him to relive it and relive the implant. The implant is some pictures and thoughts put into your brain. It's in, inducted into you. And you and once he's run incident two implant, you run him to incident one. And I did this for years. I didn't go crazy, but I know many people that did. I mean some people went crazy. Mm -hmm. It, I can relate because I was pretty stu superstitious. I believed in some weird. I I burned CDs, music that I thought was evil and of the devil, uh -huh. and like you yeah. know stuff like that. So I was thinking there were spirits in them, uh, and all sorts of stuff. But but yeah, no, this I just I'm trying to relate and just point out that it's I there are many people who do that. It's just not the same kind of religion. But this reading this is really weird because as you read it in that in that paragraph where it's almost two paragraphs, it's like it's one large paragraph in that he is telling you the very fear he wants you to, he wants to induce in you. Mm -hmm. You can die. If die. you don't do this right. Die. <laughs> Which is kind of like an honor to anyone who's doing it and they are practicing it because in their mind, the fact that they didn't die is evidence to them that they're doing it right. So there it's like this weird self-fulfilling prophecy of being chosen and being special because I didn't die of pneumonia. Just like Hubbard said, I know I'm on the right path and it's almost a BS to yourself. You know what I mean? Brilliant. Did you ever tell yourself that? That's brilliant, Derek. That's such a good analysis. You know, I left behind many friends and anyone who hears me giving away their core secrets and discussing, they're thinking in their head, that Karen de la Carrie, she's going to burn lifetime after, for the next millions of years, she's going to be in blackness. She's going to be punished for this. Her karma is going to be worse and worse. And she's going to freewheel in the hell of what she's done by giving out these core secrets. Well, let me tell you, my life every year, gets better and better and better <laughs> since I left the cult. Every year I become more wealthy. Amen. I become more healthy. I become more willing to speak. So you know what? I'm not you, gonna don't you are doing the right thing, Karen. <laughs> you're telling the deep dark secrets and you're being transparent about the Tom Fullery that you know you were caught up in. I was caught up in it. Like I get it. And what you're doing is is masterfully explaining and expressing the reality of it. Because a lot of people who've come out of this, I've heard of them and I've seen them. They're still practicing Scientologists who've left the whole thing. And you're seeing it for what it is. You're admitting where wisdom and practicality is. Like, hey, they're they're taking common sense that that anyone, you know, any wisdom teachings will tell you. They're using that as a front. They get you sucked in. And next thing you know, you're you're talking about pneumonia and xenu and volcanoes and, and, and planets and stuff. And like you and, and you're so already you're already so sucked in, you'll believe anything. But it is an interesting indoctrination that he points out. The whole self-fulfillment, 
Um, but the fear, you know, there he's touching on things. It makes me think this man was a very clever, clever man. He understood the psyche of man enough to know how to manipulate people. And right there in this, there's multiple things going on. Not only manipulation, it sounds, there's a lot of, um, your imagination is imagining things, an atomic bomb or hydrogen bomb, you know, you're imagining amazing ideas in this mass population. You can't even imagine like your imagination's going. So fiction plays a significant role, but he paints it in a way as if it's real to you. And then at the end of the day, here you have this guy who's not only trying to convince you of this, but you're told you're special and you're the only people who know about it. That feels good. It felt it felt good to me to know certain things that when I was in my version of Christianity and I looked at other people, it, part of me was like, I want you to know this, but they wouldn't listen. And at the same time, when they wouldn't listen, I would just think I was chosen. I was special. <laughs> you know, I was special and they weren't. And that's it is what it is. That's what I used to think. When you get invited to OT levels, you feel very special. Mm -hmm. You are chosen. You're the elite. You're the cream of the crop. You're a blue blood in Scientology. Yeah. Um, well, Dennis, I think that I think that we, we almost could do a part two on the belief spread because I haven't even gotten into OT four, five, six, and seven. We've spent a whole thing. OT3 is called the wall of fire, mm -hmm. even within Santa. This is the wall of fire. But then it gets even more. <laughs> Please let me do a show with you on the next. It gets even more. Um, well, I'll, I'll let you read. A few I want to read this Wikipedia page if I don't mind, if you don't mind. So we have wall of fire, right? We just dealt with the insanity of the wall of fire. And many people saw this and probably went, what the hell is this? But then you have OT4, which is the drug rundown. OT5, which is new era Dianetics for OTs. OT6, Hubbard solo new era Dianetics for OTs. Solo knots auditing course and then ot7 is hubbard solo new era dianetics for ot's auditing and then this is where it really gets you, you ready ot8 the truth revealed i mean come on who doesn't want who doesn't want to know the truth revealed right just yeah. fork up a half a million dollars and we can tell oh, you're you're into a million dollars now you oh made, really or stole you gave up your house you sold your you're living in a van. It's all gone to Scientology for these secrets. These secrets. And you know what blows me away as we're wrapping this up? Because this is so, this gets me excited just because <laughs> not, I feel bad for the people that were in it, but it excites me to discover how ridiculous this is. You know, <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. But you know, this is what really gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your face. You're you're having a blast and you know it. This is hilarious. <laughs> it's so I'm ridiculous. Also laughing at how donkey I was. But you your comments are just so cool. It's just so cool. You know, a human being will believe. It looks yeah. I saw pictures of the volcanoes in my mind, but let let me do a test on you. If I say, okay. Derek, please don't think of an elephant. I just yeah, saw an elephant. an elephant. Yeah. What just, do you get in your head? Yep. Do Do you not get an elephant? I if immediately, I say, as soon as you said the word, you got it. If yeah. the elephant is offering his trunk to get a banana from you, don't think of that. Don't think of the elephant offering his trunk at you. Don't you get it? Yeah. So I do. You can be very suggestible, and you can get what you're told happen. Anyway, I did years of this. I, I, but I'm out of it all. <laughs> well, they packaged it in a way. It was a clever packaging. I'm sure what we're doing is we're cutting through the fluff and letting you see it for it, what it is without putting all of the, what I like to call drinking the Kool-Aid glasses on. Cause if you were wearing her glasses at the time, you would totally understand where she's coming from and why it's not ridiculous. But 
because we're not indoctrinated and we're watching this and we're looking at it, you can now, you can look at it and laugh. And we like, you're talking to someone who knows exactly what it felt like to be OT3, OT4, OT8. She knows the truth revealed, okay? Like she experienced it. It wasn't just ha 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 with Derek being a skeptic, mocking at this. She breathed it. She lived it. So I just want people to kind of try to put your, you know, the Scientologist shoe on, but at the same time realize this is baloney and what they're doing is harming people's lives. But I, I just, I make you laugh. I know it's funny, and but, but at the end of the day, I can only imagine, I want to give one analogy before I let you go, is this early Christianity, they, they sold this package, okay, that not only will you live forever, because they gave you promise of life after death, okay, not only will you get to live forever, but you can only worship the one God, and you are a, an elect, a chosen one, if you choose this hard path of persecution, and I'm talking about when I say early Christianity, I'm not talking about the Roman Catholic Church. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about church history. I'm not talking about the Eastern Orthodox or the Greek Orthodox or the Episcopalian or the you name it. I'm talking about the early Jewish movement that we find in the early pages of the Bible and the New Testament. And they had a special cult that was saying you can have life after death. Now, this isn't as ridiculous as you know, Xenu volcanoes and science fiction stuff at the end of the day. But if you're packaged in a, in a space age and technology is advancing in the 21st century, you can see why people would fall into the trap of what L. Ron Hubbard's saying. But the point is, don't you want to be special and unique and be a chosen one and, and be there when, when God comes back to change everything? You want to be the one, don't you? And that pulls people in. In fact, pagans who never cared about the God of Israel, the Jewish God, they didn't like him. Many pagans found this whole cult very interesting and were drawn to it because you could go and worship Osiris, Serapis, Apollon, you know, the, the different deities. You could go to Apollo, whatever. You could worship all these gods and join all these different movements that promised you different things. But when Christianity came on the scene, they said, no, one God. But don't worry, this God will defeat all of the other gods. Oh, and you're special. That's the whole that's the whole teaching. Oh, that's very that was brilliantly said. Even yeah. I learned something there. Very good, Derek. Yeah, it Why just connects that? to it. It connects ah, to it. Oh. The point is, is you yeah. weren't you're not an idiot. Like no people mm -hmm. who are in this are not dumb. The, the, but there is a manipulation of all of us wanting to be special and Scientology really capitalized on that. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, not admitting that they don't believe in any God. There is no God. We've discussed this, Dennis. There is yeah. no God in Scientology. Yeah. You are God. I am God. We are God. All the BTs are God. <laughs> Everyone is God. So there's no, there's no higher deity to worship or, acknowledge or appreciate none none right. but again that's the bait and switch it's never you're never told that you never mm. never told that oh wow Finally, okay just to wrap up you usually Please. Say, go ahead usually you say is there anything you want to say before um, yeah yeah no i'm interested in hearing any words that you'd like I, to say well there is a very very famous hollywood director and producer called Paul Haggis, and he did, he won two Academy Awards. One was for Million Dollar Baby, story of a female boxer, Million Dollar Baby won Best Picture. And another movie he did called Crash, Best Picture. So he, it's very rare that a director, you gotta be in the, in the league of Steve, Stephen, um, let me go blank on it. What's the name of the director that did Jaws? Steve Jaws. The... Anyway, Steve Spielberg? Spielberg. Spielberg. Okay, okay. I'm like, I'm Spielberg. trying to think. Spielberg. You got to be in that league to win more than one Academy Award and to get two pictures that you produced and directed Best Picture. Paul Haggis was a Scientologist. 
And the reason I'm telling you about him is he hit OT3. And he tells the story. I'll send you a clip. He reads this. And the first thing he looks up and he tells the staff, is this a joke? And he thinks, you know what? They're testing me. They're bull baiting me to see how loyal I am if I'll fall for this. This this can't be real. This is totally science fiction. And they said, no, 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 this is serious. This is the wall of fire. And he thought, somebody's pulling my leg. They think I'm going to sit down and believe this horseshit? Anyway, long story short, Paul Haggis walked right out on that day, never to do any more Scientology. He looked at OT3 and thought, I am not going to swallow this. Unlike sheep like me that did swallow, (laughs) Paul Haggis had his integrity. And he and Leah Remini have done shows since, and they've laughed and cried together and stuff like that. So there's an example. And and I want to tell you, many people did look at all this and go, no, no. Yeah. I'm not going to play ball with this. I'm not going to ever attack Scientology. I'm not going to speak out. Don't worry about me. I'm not going to go on the internet. I'm not going to make YouTube videos. But sayonara. I'm done. I don't want any any more of this. And Scientology will never let you know how many people looked at this and walked out the door. Mm. You see, they're crazy about metrics and statistics, but they'll never give you this statistic. So not everybody got bamboozled by a long shot. Some people did the Paul Haggis route. They looked at it and they said, what? Look, I got gain running communication drills and all that lower level (laughs) good stuff you had. But this? And I'm supposed to run my attached spirits on the volcanoes and H1? No! And they walk out the door. Derek, there's been a percentage that did walk out the door seeing you. Good for them. You know, it begs the question, if there was ever a time someone asked L. Ron Hubbard to explain how he came, how he received this information, uh, how did he actually come to attain this information, which I know, and you know, he made this up. But the point is, has he ever gone on record trying to uh, say, I did space travel or I somehow was transplanted back 500 billion years ago, whatever. My point is, has he ever explained why? Or is that too, is that outside of the realm of anything that's been actually explained? There was a guy who just passed. Tony Ortega did a whole blog today on him called Jim Dinchelsey. Jim was a sweetheart and he lived with Hubbard. When Hubbard went into hiding in New York, he left the Apollo because there were there was the the French government had indicted him for fraud. So he was a wanted criminal in France. That's the whole story of how they bamboozled French people to give up gobs of money. Anyway, Hubbard got indicted. And he, Hubbard fled the Apollo and went to live in New York, in Queens, New York. And Jim and another guy called Paul Preston lived with Hubbard for nine months. And Jim and I became good friends. I hosted him and he lived in my... And I talked to Jim a lot about the very question you asked. I said, how did he, was it just, um, Jim told me that Hubbard did a kind of channeling, if you can know what that is. Yeah. His eyes would roll up and flutter through you, and he would get <laughs> communication from extraterrestrial higher beings or whatever, and he would furiously write, and he would be just gone. And then two hours later, he would shake himself back down to earth. He was so, Jim lived with Hubbard for those nine months. And Jim, 
I'm not saying all of OT3 was channeled and it, it was like a download, an internet download from. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so what do you make of that? I mean, the, there's mystery after, who knows? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. there is someone who lived with him by all record, there's no question. And Jim said, Hubbard did channel. What is channeling? Channeling is when <laughs> people don't think I'm completely wrong. I, I, I didn't say I believed in channeling, but the definition of channeling is you let some out of spirits right. kind of download their data to you from outer space or from wherever they are. And <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> well, look. I, I definitely want to wrap it up here. Well, Let's continue OT4 through yeah, 8 and continue yeah, on. Absolutely. People want to know the secrets before spending yes. a million dollars on this. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Derek, this was fun. Thank I, you I, I so really much. You made me just hoot with laughter. Thank you. If Thank you, you want to channel that. the spirit of myth vision, you can with us. <laughs> we are myth vision. <laughs>